Hello everyone, my name is Drew, and this is my tier list for every available encounter in Emerald Kaizo for Hardcore Nuzlocks. I'm a player who I believe to know a lot about the game, so I'll try to share some of my knowledge with you guys. In this list, we will be taking into account where in the game you get it and how useful it is at the time. The complete evolution line, so pre-evolutions count, we will be assuming it has the best ability. For example, Donphan will always be assumed to have battle armor and not sturdy. For Pokemon that have two decent abilities, we will consider both. I will include some trade-offs for specific mons, for example if there is a better encounter in the area, or a better evolution. Let's start with the starters. Swampert is basically a version of Whiskash that can be good against Watson, get Mirror Coat, has better stats, it can be useful in fights such as Maxi 2 and Archie, but has some huge trade-offs of not being two of the best starters, which I would consider to be better, but let's just look at this objectively without the trade-off. Swampert is a pretty solid Pokemon in itself. You could definitely have a lot of success in EK with Swampert. We're gonna put him in A tier. Sceptile is one of the only sweepers in the game, makes great use of the overgrow ability, has great stab as water types are very common, and it has a ton of uses. Grovel is insane for Roxanne, can be used on Brawly, can be Watson's Jolteon, can be an Alakazam answer on Archie, kill Flannery's Charizard, sweep Weather Institute, kill Massey 2's Executor, sweep Trainers in Seafloor Cavern and Sutopolis Gym, gets Magical Leaf for Bright Powder users, and can even be used on Elite Four. It truly has a lot of uses, so it goes in A tier. So, Combuskin is really good for Roxanne, killing Nosepass and Elite back to back. It's great for Flannery trainers, and Rockslide does great against Flannery herself. It's pretty good for Magma Hideout. It's not crazy good for too much else, except the Elite Four, however, and Maxi. It's one of the only safe ways of killing Steven's Jirachi, even though you need really good speed, and you beat it right after killing Steven's Metagross. Plays against few niches of being great for the hardest parts of the game, lands it in A+, next to Sceptile. Braligator is one of my favorite mods to use in Emerald Kaizo. It gets bad Battle Arbor and great moves in Ancient Power, Super Power, Ice Punch, and Water Stab. It's particularly good for Winona, Magma Hideout Trainers, and Steven Tag Battle. Though you usually get it after Norman, unless you get it from Pelipper Grass, it's really good for a good chunk of the game, putting it in B+. Beginium Line is something you get early in Rustboro or Safari Zone. It's decent for Roxanne's Lunatone, and has some okay moves in Sludge Bomb, Rock Slide, Petal Dance, and gets Thick Fat, making it a solid Pokemon in B tier. Blastoise is a guaranteed to counter on 109, and can be solid after Watson, but it falls off. It has decent stats for the part of the game it's good in, and has some cool moves like Mirror Code and Size of Toss, and gives you cool fake out strategies in dull battles. But overall, it isn't anything special, and sometimes it's better to go for something else on Route 109, putting it in C tier. Now for the fire types. These Pokemon are very good for Flannery and Magma Hideout specifically giving them great value for hard parts of the game. Charizard unfortunately doesn't get flamethrower until Winona, but having a flying type gives it a lot of uses. Slackings, Pokemon with ground coverage to pivot in, fighting types, and has pretty good offensive stats and can make use of its blaze ability. It's available early in the game, but unfortunately isn't usable for a while, but it's really, really good for Magma Hideout. So it goes in B tier. Clarion is a pure fire type that has great attack and special defense, giving it great matchups against other fire types. However, its move pool is pretty limited. It is a great option for the Dig TM, and it does get superpower later, but its speed holds it back a lot. It gets put in C tier. Arcanine has fantastic stats and an amazing move pool. Flamethrower, Morning Sun, Wild Charge, and Extreme Speed. Extreme Speed being the best priority move in the game, and Morning Sun being great as you can even PP stall Pokemon with Arcanine under Sun. It's amazing for Flannery, Magma Hideout, and numerous fights. It also gets Intimidate, putting it in A tier. Carrot has one of the best dual typings with its Stab Earthquake being great for fire types. It can be used on Maxi 2's Engar or Arcanine. It's also insanely good for Flannery, and it also gets Explosion. Point it in B+. Cargo is a very unique Pokemon. It's the most common and safer options for Roxanne's Little Leap. It gets Recover, can be Tabitha's Arcanine, Maxi's Crobat, Flannery's Arcanine, and has a Ties 4 resistance to fire. It isn't great for a large portion of the game, but it is good for what it does. Goes in A tier. Assuming Torkoal gets Battle Armor, it becomes a safe wall against a ton of Pokemon. Keegan's Victory Bell is a big one. It is insane for Flannery's Gym and Magma Hideout. It can explode on Maxi 2's Entei or Arcanine as well. It also has other uses outside of Sun Splits because of Battle Armor, and it gets great coverage. Point it in B+. The rest of the fire types are pretty similar in being fast, and having similar roles. Ninetales and Magmar are extremely similar with Ninetales hitting a little harder and being a little faster with a little more bulk. It also gets psychic coverage, but both are just gonna mainly be using their fire moves and sun. And both are pretty sackable, you can play them risking other fire types. Ninetales in B tier, 
and Magmar, and C+. Typhlosion is similar to the last two, but has better special attack and makes use of the Blaze ability, and it gets Thunder Punch being a great option for a Winona. Problem is, this is usable much later than the other fire types, putting it in B tier. Rapidash actually makes great use of its physical attack with Drill Run, giving it fantastic coverage. It also gets pretty useful moves in Wild Charge, Megahorn, and Morning Sun, letting it have more matchups than other fire types, putting it in B tier. Now for the normal types. These Pokemon range a lot, but usually have decent coverage, some are bulky, some are offensive, and there are a lot of Guts users. Ligatung is very rare, you can only get it on the Chinchu route or in Safari Zone, and its stats aren't good and it doesn't get anything crazy, so it goes in F tier. Apom would at least have some use of Fake Out, but it's only 1% on 103, a route where you want something like Sunflora, but I imagine it's okay for Roxanne with Brick Break, and has some use with Fake Out, I guess, but it goes in F tier. Spinda gets Fake Out on Hyper Voice, which could be really good for Watson Split, but it doesn't really do much after that. C+. Lainu is only encountered on Winona Split and doesn't get Belly Drum, though it does get Guts Facade. And it could be good for some random trainers, but it's not anything crazy because it only has 70 base attack. Point it in C tier. Raticate is a slightly better Guts user that you also get on Winona Split, but doesn't have quite enough attack to be an insane sweeper. It's basically just a weak Zangoose. Point it in C+. Zangoose is also a Guts user, but actually gets good coverage in Brick Break and Shadow Ball, and has 115 attack and 90 speed. You also get this on Winona Split, and this one is actually a way better sweeper. It also has some pretty good E4 viability. Point it in B+. Chris Ring is a Guts user with a monster 130 attack stat, but it does get held back with 55 speed. If you score a fast Earth Ring, it could be an absolute beast, but on average it doesn't kill a ton. Point it in C+. Swellow is a monster Guts user, with high speed and pretty good attack. You can get this right off the bat on 103 or later in Fortree or Sky Pillar, where it's still good to get. Facade Talo is great for Brawly, and Swellow can come to about 80% of all fights in the game with notable sweeping opportunities on Watson, Flannery, and it's good for Elite Four. What sets this Guts user apart is the fact that it has immunity to ground and it's fast, and you get it super early. Although it doesn't hit as hard as stuff like Zangoose or Earthring, its speed being more common and being useful for a longer stretch of the game, and particularly Brawly and Watson, the Brawly and Watson in, put Snorlax is available 1% in Safari Zone and insanely hard to catch, so I'm not going to take that into account because it would be absolutely broken for that part of the game. So for simplicity, I'm just going to assume that this is only available on Route 123, where it's still really hard to catch because it has Rollwind and 3 catch rate. But assuming that you do catch it, Snorlax is just an average Elite 4 Pokemon. It's actually not that crazy. It usually does die to Latios Draco Meteor, and it's pretty slow. It doesn't even beat Drake's Tyrant. Rantar well. Point it in C+. Tauros is one of the best Elite 4 Pokemon. It's available earlier than that in Safari Zone, where it's pretty decent, but also later on 123 after the 8th gym. Tauros is very good with Intimidate, and it has decent bulk, and being fast and having good attack, and it gets coverage. It's pretty good for various trainers, but really shines as one of the best Elite 4 Pokemon. Being an Intimidator immune to Ghost can make Cindy and Phoebe really easy. It can also be stuff like Houndoom and Tyrantar 2. Point it in A tier. Slacking is mankind's greatest creature. Its stats run up the chart, and it's here to double-edge anything in sight. You can get this early in Pedalburg Woods, mid-game in Safari, or late on 123. Once you evolve it after Watson, it's basically a free kill on anything that doesn't resist normal. It also gets Slack Off and Fast Encore, giving it so many uses. I can't even name all the fights it's useful for, but I can say it's one of the best Elite Four Pokemon. It can potentially straight up outspeed and kill Drake's Latios, and it's a great Encore user. It's also really good for Glacia. Slacking is just all around a very unique and amazing Pokemon, and it has a role in almost everything after evolving. Balls. Point it in S tier. Kangaskhan is a late game encounter that is really good for Elite Four and has great stats and access to Fake Out, which helps with ranges on E4. It also it's also a decent lead against Drake's Latios and can be used against Glacius Glalie and Drake's Tyranitar. Point it in B plus. Ramble is a pretty good normal type option for Elite Four. Its main plus is being Intimidate, though it is kind of slow, but it still can be Tyranitar. It can also be okay for Flannery Split, which is the earliest you can get it. Point it in B+. Kecleon has good special bulk and gets Fake Out and Shadow Sneak. It's pretty good on Winona and Tain Liza Splits, and can have some cool color change strats. It's an okay Elite 4 bring too, with being Alakazam, Gardevoir, and Latios, though there are better options. Point it in C+. Strats. It's an okay Elite Four bring too, with being Alakazam, Gardevoir, and Latios. Point it in C+.
Jiggly and Wiggly can be in three places, two of which are the places where you get Magikarp and the other where you get Kabuto or Ammonite. Last is in Lily Cove, which is far too late to do anything useful and literally only gets four moves. F tier. Dunsparce is pretty much just decent on Roxanne, assuming you get your tunnel encounter, but even then, it's one of the worst encounters there, and you want a ground or rock type. And it's just an okay Pokemon for Watson split. F tier. Persian is a fast normal type with Fake Out, and can beat Maxi's Alakazam. It's not an amazingly 4 Pokemon, and doesn't have enough attack to do much. It's somewhat usable for mid game though, point it in C tier. Clefairy is obtainable before Brawly, and most likely can be evolved in Fall Arbor. Though it is pretty uncommon, Clefairy seems okay for Wadzen Split, but later, Clefable is a pretty unique Pokemon. It gets Meteor Mash, Moonlight, Tri-Attack, Wish, Recycle, Follow Me, and Helping Hand, giving it a lot of creative potential, especially for dull battles like Tain Liza, Archie, and Juan. It's not insanely bulky and really only has access to these moves if you get it as a Clefairy, but it can be decent for the Elite Four. Like after EPB stall Glacia's Dugong, you can Wish Pass to heal up your team. It's nothing crazy though, point it in C+. Grafrig is a late game encounter that just doesn't really do much. It might be okay for Tain Liza trainers, but that's about it. It's learn set consists of mainly just attacking moves. D tier. Stanler being an intimidate normal type with decent speed and attack and light screen and reflect makes it an okay Elite Four option. You can also get it before Flannery. It's surprisingly an okay Pokemon. Fuck did I Porygon 2 is an interesting Pokemon as it gets Trace. So you can Trace Chlorophyll, Swiss Swim, Water, or Volt Absorb, and other useful abilities, giving it some cool uses. It mainly is just there for Trace gimmicks and Recover Stall, Point It, and C+. Fur can only be caught on a route where you get Cast Form or Milotic. It does get Follow Me and Helping Hand, but the trade-off is too big. Point It, and F tier. Cast Form is a good Pokemon. It's great for Magma Hideout, it usually comes to Courtney and Maxi too. Gets access to some great moves in Weather Ball, Ice Beam, Icy Wind, and has crazy stat buffs. Another plus is that it always holds a Mystic Water. It's also usable in Rain Splits. It's not fantastic for Elite Four, but it is usable there too, and it's the only guaranteed normal type you get. Point it in B+. Noctowl is decent for Brawly. Kinda sucks after early game. Nothing too special about it. D tier. Farfetch stats are terrible. You only get Peck for Brawly. It has 85 attack, but it's too slow and not bulky enough to do anything. Maybe some 1 HP steel strats somewhere, but it goes in F tier. You can get Dodrio in Fortry City or Victory Road. It's a pretty solid normal flying type with a lot of attack and speed and try attack. It also gets double edge, drill peck, and quick attack. It's probably a low end E4 value, but it's pretty good before then. C+. Togetic is obtainable in Lily Cove City. It really only uses Follow Me in some random dull battles and extreme speed to sack, and it's a slow Encore user. Could be nice for Encore Matt 2's Wailer into EQ, stuff like that, but it's not a scary mod to begin with. Pretty bad outside of that. D tier. Barrow is a beast for Brawly as it can Rage Sweep. It's decent for Watson Split and can be a good sackable option against Maxi and Flannery. Rage Sweep, Pharaoh, and E4 is pretty much a meme, but if you get a God Pharaoh, it's possible. C+. Pidgeot is a pretty average flying type. You get it by Winona, it does get Sky Attack and Heat Wave. It's pretty decent, but it's nothing crazy. C tier. Altaria has cool typing and it's okay for a hideout, but it doesn't really do too much outstanding. It's just an okay Pokemon, point it in C+. Now we get to some pseudo legends. I know Flygon isn't a pseudo legend, but we're just gonna put it in here for simplicity. Metagross is on the route with Kabuto and Ammonite, and the other place you get it is in Meter Falls, which is very late in the game, but we're just gonna assume that you get it from the fossil list, and we won't include the trade off for this one because I want to see, like, objectively how good it would be in the game. It's a pretty low end Elite Four Pokemon, but it's really good for Winona, and the other place you get it is in Meter Falls, where you it actually seems really good for the gym fight. So I'm gonna slap it in B. On the off chance you get Tyrantar in Meteor Falls, it'll be too late in the game to be good. It's just just an okay Elite Four bring, though it has Intimidate and might be okay for Glacia and previous members. It makes an E4 without Dusclops more manageable at least, but I'd rather have something else. D tier. Dragonite is a Pokemon that is actually pretty easy to get with the correct encounter routing. It's just like Tyranitar where you can only get it in Meteor Falls after Juan. However, Dragonite isn't anything special, especially because Salamence exists. The only reason it will be good is if it was viable for E4. What makes Salamence good is that it has Intimidate, it's very fast, has Air Slash, and you get it early on. Dragonite has none of these, and frankly, it's just terrible for E4, making it pretty much useless. Flygon is a monster. You get this for a Winona split, it's typing, levitate ability, and moveset makes this Pokemon useful for big parts of the game. Big one is Magma Hideout having fast ground stab, levitate, and fire resist. That means it could come to almost every fight in there. It's also one of the best Pokemon for Maxi 2 being a check for Arcanine and Entei. It's also usable for Tain Liza Trainer and the gym fight. There's also some pretty cool AI glitches that you can use for, to your advantage with levitate. 
put it in A tier. Salamence is used for just about everything from the time it evolves. It's quite literally the mid to late game carry besides maybe the rain splits. It's also one of the best Elite Four Pokemon and only guaranteed Intimidate user besides Gyarados. It also technically can boost its attack with Rage, given enough creativity that can turn it into a sweeper, specifically good for Winona, Magma Hideout, Maxi 2, and Elite Four point it in S+. Time for some electric types. Starting with Manetric, it's the only one that gets Intimidate, making it pretty unique. It's also fast and has pretty good offensive stats. It also gets Fire and Dark coverage, and you get it by Watson. It also gets a fast, hard-hitting Shockwave for Bright Powder users. All around, it's a very solid electric type and decent for Tabitha, Winona, and just filling an electric type role. Put it in B tier. Magneton's best feature is Magnapole. It's amazing for getting Aeron in Full Arbor, Scizor on 119, and Steelix in Magma Hideout. It's pretty good for Flannery Split, it, but does fall off a bit. Magnapole alone puts it in B+. Plus, so mine are okay fast electric types, but their main thing is Encore. It can't take hits, so it's usually just Encoring stuff into steel or electric type attacks. But it also can Encore stuff like non-attacking moves and stuff like Fake Out. It's nice for Flannery with Encoring fire types into electric moves. With that said, it's very limited, putting them in C tier. Ampharos is a pretty decent Pokemon. It's pretty bulky and hits hard. Good for Maxi's Crobat, but it's nothing crazy. It hits hard enough to kill Bright Powder Gyaradoses. C+. Jolteon is not amazing. You get it way later than you want, and it doesn't get any good coverage, and it doesn't even get Thunderbolt. Most of the other electric types you can get way earlier, putting it in C tier. Electabuzz is just kind of an average electric type. It does get fire and ice coverage, which is nice, but it's pretty mediocre, putting it in C+. Raichu is okay. You can delay Pikachu to use Light Ball, but the problem is Pikachu is too frail, and it just baits random moves from everything. Raichu has 90 special attack, which is isn't really good, but it does have access to Volt Tackle, C+. Electrode has Explosion, but its attack stat isn't good enough to use it well. And its special attack isn't crazy, but its speed is really useful. What's nice about it is that it has enough speed to outspeed some Swiss Swim water types late game. Playing it in C+. Lantern is a much needed Pokemon, and one of the most unique. It's the single best Pokemon for Watson, beating multiple Pokemon, and it's solid after that, and coming back online after Tain Liza to be again one of the most useful Pokemon for Seafloor Cavern and the 8th Gym. It's the only Pokemon that can really deal with a wide variety of water types, and its stab electric type hitting water types effectively is really, really valuable. It's just a really important Pokemon, and about the only Pokemon that is needed to beat the game. Putting it in S tier. Ludicolo is a late game encounter that is fantastic for Seafloor Cavern each gym. It's hard to think how you would get through these rain splits without it. It's very good for Archie, and both abilities are usable. It's extremely good for Glacia, though some teams can live without it. Goes in S tier. Polyrath is very unique. Being able to resist water and hit various monsters super effectively superpower, and getting Swiss Swim makes this Pokemon fantastic. It's really good for Sufiller Cavern and the 8th Gym. This Pokemon is also very good before that, notably great for Flannery Split. Overall, this Pokemon is one of the best for killing water types that are weak to fighting, and it has just a lot of uses outside of that. Clean it in B+. Seeking is decent for Brawly, but falls off hard. Megahorn and Jewel Run can sometimes do stuff, but there's no reason to go for it outside of dupes. C tier. Artillery is really good for Watson split and okay for Flannery split. It gets really cool coverage moves. C tier. Slowbro is absolutely busted completely changed the meta at the time and made late game EK so much easier. It's insane for Seafloor Cavern and the 8th Gym, specifically Wallace, and of course, one of the best Elite Four Pokemon with Slack Off, Recycle, Lumberry, PP stalls. It helps a lot for Glacia, Drake, and Steven as well. Easily S+. Slowking is so much worse. It doesn't have shell armor and it can do nothing that Slowbro does. There's no reason to get this, so we're putting it in this tier. Pelipper isn't anything that special. You can get it early as a Wingle, but it sucks for that, and it's just okay for mid game. It does hit relatively hard, and it does get Swiss Swim, but it's pretty mediocre. Putting it in C tier. Army is a much needed Pokemon for Steven Tag Battle after Tay and Liza. It has a cool viability late game in Tay and Liza's gym, Seafloor Cavern, and the 8th gym, but it's nothing crazy outside of the Tag Battle. Overall, it's a Pokemon you always get, it fills its role nicely, and it can be used after the Tag Battle if it lives. Corsola is terrible. It is somewhat bulky, but taking neutral to water means it doesn't really have any any uses as you get it so late. 
F tier. Albus Ops is an absolute unit, amazing for just about the entire game until Seafloor Cavern. Battle Armor means it can stay in against so many more Pokemon, it's also very fast and has great coverage, and its stab rock slice have so many uses. Easily goes in A tier. Omastar is very good as well with Shell Armor. It's more bulky, so it's more of a pivot, and has a lot of similarities to Kabutops in terms of how much you can use it. It has a really good special attack stat. It also goes in A tier. Antine is a great Watson pivot, amazing for Flannery split, and great for Flannery yourself. In fact, it's one of the best Pokemon you can get for Flannery's gym. It stays a solid Pokemon after that, it's good for Seafloor Cavern and the 8th gym, and it's a very solid Swiss one Pokemon. It's also good for Sora's Salamence and Winona's gym, and it's a good Pokemon for Magma Hideout. It's really just great for mid and late game. B+. Milotic is a Pokemon you can get earlier on Winona Split, where it's pretty decent for most of the game. It gets Recover, Mirror Code, and Ice Coverage, and it's also guaranteed. It's also guaranteed after Quan. It helps a ton in the Elite Four if you need it. Slowbro kind of replaced Milotic on Elite Four teams, but Milotic is still really good for Glacia and Drake, making it still usable on Slowbro E4 teams, or if you just miss out on Slowbro altogether. Nowadays isn't as needed, but it's a very, very solid Pokemon to pick up. It was an A tier. Sharpedo is a monster. It gets so many good coverage options, and it's about the most common dark type, which is a type you're gonna need. It's amazing for Flannery Split, and great for just about all of mid-game. At best, it's an okay Swiss Swimmer for Rain Splits, but you always want Poliwrath. E tier. Dugon is one of the most consistent Pokemon you get guaranteed. It's amazing for Watson Split, and a common VA pivot. It's great for Flannery Split, Thick Fat and Swiss Swim both have their respective viabilities. It also gets Icy Wind, Ice Shard, and Fake Out Utility. It does fall off, but is very solid, and you get it every time. B+. Wailord is one of the most single important Pokemon for late game. Without it, Wallace's Milotic and other water types late game become a lot harder. It's also great for booming on Juan. Its stats and EK make it great, and Hyper Voice Access makes it very unique. A+. Tentacruel is common, and Tentacruel is amazing. It's one of your best Wobbuffet answers, it's amazing for Flannery, Gym, and all of mid-game. It's also very good for Magma Hideout and Courtney, and it stays good for Rain Splits late game. Its typing is fantastic for taking Solar Beams, and Toxic gives it a lot of uses. It's great for Maxi's Houndoom and being stuff like Wobbuffets, Ludicolos, Milotics, Kingdras, and so much more. It goes in S tier. Wall Rain is a pretty decent water type for late game, but really is good because of its Elite Four viability. It's great for Glacia and Drake, and can fit some E4 teams with Encore, Ice Shard, Super Fang, and its Rain Dish ability. Playing it in B+. Huntail will include Clamperl. Although Clamperl is very useful for Brawly, it is in no way required. Until yes, can be good for some trainers on Watson Split, but I believe it's one of the most overrated Pokemon. If you're able to skip Clamperl, you can get a much better Cloister on the same route. And Huntil becomes almost useless besides Super Fang and Wild Pokemon. I'd rather have a Gorbis for late game too. This might be surprising, but Huntil goes in C tier. Brawdon is a very solid Dark type. It also has Battle Armor access. It's a decent maxi Alakazam answer, and a much needed dark type, though there are a couple better options. It lacks a ton of bulk, but can be used to kill a number of things. It's really good on Tain Liza as well. B tier. Love Disc is very overrated. It helps out for Roxanne and Brawly for new players, but I'd rather get a much better Pokemon in Little Root instead. Oftentimes, you don't really even need Love Disc for Roxanne or Brawly, maybe it just makes it a slightly less riskier. Other Little Root options are so much better. It's a good Pokemon for people starting off, but with optimal play, you never take this. D Tier. Relicanth is a beast. It's so good for Archie and a very good Elite Four option. Swiss Swim Rally is one of the only safe options against Glalie, and it could kill multiple Pokemon on Glacia. It pairs well with Salamence and Intimidators for Sydney and Phoebe. It's also pretty good for Drake's Latios. Putting it in A+. Kingler is a battle armor Pokemon that isn't anything crazy, its special attack is pretty terrible, making its stab moves bad, though it does have pretty good coverage in AP, Superpower, X-Scissor, and Mudshot. It's pretty good for Flannery Split, Rock and Ground types, and in Magma Hideout, but it's nothing crazy. C+. Gorbis is pretty underrated for a late game because not many people are able to get it. I'd say it's probably worth it to even delay Clamperl for this. It's great for Archie, and it's just about the strongest Swiss swimmer you can get. Whiskash is a Pokemon you always want. There's so many fights where it's useful for mid game and it carries the first Magma Gauntlet, Mount Chimney, Flannery Trainers, and it's good for Magma Hideout. It's such a good pivot for Flannery's gym with Solar Beam AI as well. A+. Coalfish has a special role of being a Swiss Swim Boom Pokemon. It's decent for range trainers with Gunk Shot, but mainly is just here for a safe, 
one. Wolfish goes in A tier. Azu does really well in Roxanne and Brawly, especially Brawly with Charm. It's okay for Watson Split, but does fall off a bit. It's decent for Matt 2's Waylord, both abilities are fine. Huge Power helps it a bit, but it does fall off. It goes in B tier. Oyster is a beast with Shell Armor. It carries Flannery Split besides Fire types. It's fantastic for Norman and Winona, as it uses on Tain Liza Split, and is a late game boomer. Go for this over Clamperl unless your Brawly team is terrible. A tier. Golduck is a pretty average Swiss swimmer. Psyduck is okay for Roxanne, but this Pokemon is outclassed easily. C tier. Gyarados is pretty essential early to mid game. Intimidate, good stats, and good typing. Fantastic for Flannery Split, Mount Chimney, Maxi, and Flannery Pivoting. It's great afterwards on Norman and Winona Split too. It can be used for Magma Hideout and a good Tain Liza Pivot. You basically need this to beat Brawly, as well as it's great for Matt and Mount Pyre. It really has so many uses. Vaporeon is a pretty bulky Swiss swimmer. Doesn't seem to have any outstanding uses. Helping Hand could be cool for Juan, but it might just be okay in rain splits. C+. Lapras is okay in rain splits and gets shell armor. It gets good rock and ground coverage. It could be a good mod for rain trainers, but it doesn't seem outstanding for any boss fights. C+. Waters or Quagsire is pretty interesting. It's similar to Lantern late game, but it kinda gets replaced by it. There are some scary rain trainers late that it helps a lot with. It can be overrated, but it fills a crucial role if used properly. It just doesn't have enough damage output and takes too much to be as good as Lantern. B tier. Executor is an amazing Pokemon for Flannery's Gym and Magma Hideout. It can beat Victory Bells and has a monster special attack, giving it a lot of uses. Egg Bomb is crazy strong and it gets Explosion, giving it viability for a sack on Maxi 2. A tier. And it gets Explosion, giving it viability for a sack on Maxi 2. Tier. <clears throat> Even Feather Ball and Gunk Shot, and it's faster, and it's more complete where it really shines. In Magma Hideout 2. It can also beat Wobbuffets with Toxic. Insane for Expert Keegan and Flannery B+. Venusaur is good under Sun. It's fast, but it doesn't hit as hard. Weather Ball, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, H Power, and Pedal Dance gives it good uses for Flannery's Gym and Magma Hydro. Victory Bell has higher attack and Gunk Shot, which makes it a lot better, but Venu is not for non-Sun Splits because of its bulk and Synthesis access. B+. Parasect has some uses against random trainers, and Spore isn't very viable because it's slow, and most Pokemon have Lumberries. What it is really good for though is pivoting on Winona and baiting HP flying from Aerodactyl. It resists Earthquake and Giga Drain, and is just really good for that fight. B tier. Roselia is okay early on, especially Watson Split, but it's nothing special. D tier. Tropius is okay in Magma Hideout with Chlorophyll, but its stats are just way too bad to be a good Pokemon. Not a terrible pivot though. D tier. So Flora is the single best early game encounter you can get, with being great for Roxanne, Sweeping Brawly, and Sweeping Watson. But it also has some underrated late game uses. If you're creative enough, you can set up some Flora on some big fights and random trainers like Matt 2 and Tain Liza Eve. It can even be a last ditch E4 bring. A+. Jump Bluff is fast, but it doesn't do any damage. It's an okay pivot and gets toxic in Helping Hand, but it's pretty bad. F tier. You mostly just get Cradilly late game where it's just okay for Tain Liza trainers, but and it's okay for rain splits. The bi a big appeal to this is potentially being an E4 Pokemon with Mirror Code and Recover. It just doesn't have quite enough resistances. B tier. There's no reason to go for Soul Rock and Meteor Falls, it does nothing special, and I'd rather have a Milotic or Relicanth. F tier. Lunatone, on the other hand, is actually obtainable outside of Meteor Falls. Granted, it's still late in the game, earliest is Magma Hideout, and it seems okay for Hideout and Tain Liza trainers, but it's nothing special. D tier. Nose Pass is terrible. Yes, it has battle armor, but it does no damage. It doesn't even get Magnapult. C tier. Pseudo Widow doesn't even get Head Smash for Winona. If it did, it would be a lot better. It's okay for Flannery Split and Norman, and it's fine for Hideout. It's a decent boomer on Tain Liza as well. C tier. Aerodactyl has one place you can get it, and that's 1% in Cave of Origin, which is the place you get Duskull, so you don't get it. Ramaldo is such a beast. Battle armor, great attack, bulky, great for Magma Hideout, it can eat booms, it's just about the best Pokemon you can get for Tain Liza trainers. It can be used for Tain Liza herself, if you have some insane strats it could be used for E4, but unlikely. A+. Olam is an amazing Head Smash user, you always want this. It's great for Maxi, it's usually your best lead for Winona, it can eat explosions at times, it's good for Magma Hideout. Even if you don't get Rockhead, it's still very good. A tier. 
Rhydon is just worse golem that doesn't get head smash. It's still pretty good though. C+. Nidoking is a beast for Flannery Split and Magma Hideout, one of the best Pokemon. It's great for mid game and it's a fantastic pivot for Tain Liza. It gets a bunch of cool moves too. It's also great for Flannery. It's useful for a lot of the game, put it in B+. Nidoqueen is a worse version of Nidoking. It doesn't get head smash and is less attack. It's still pretty good, though not getting rock coverage kinda sucks and is available way later, which is after Flannery, unlike Nidoking. C+. Gligar can only be obtained where you get your guaranteed bag on, so you don't get this. Donphan carries hard. Battle Armor Donphan is great for Watsons and Feroz, and is good for just about everything and can even be paired on E4 teams. You bring it to almost every fight mid-game, with notable uses on Winona as well. Beats almost all physical attackers in the game. A+. The trio is fine for Hideout, it has a fast Earthquake against Maxi 2, but that's about it. B tier. You can get Claydol and Magma Hideout, where it's probably decent. It seems okay for Tain and Liza trainers, but it's nothing crazy. C tier. Marowak is pretty good for Watson and a solid ground type for Magma Hideout. Thick Club potential is great, but usually it's just okay at best. C tier. Sand Slash early on is pretty nice against Roxanne, and it's okay for Watson. It's not terrible for Magma Hideout, but it's mediocre. C tier. You can only get Skarmory on Route 123, which is after the 8th gym, and it's terrible for the Elite Four. F tier. Battle Armor Fortress is amazing. It's a beast for mid game, it's a great pivot for Flannery's gym, amazing for Maxi, great for Norman, Magma, and Aqua hideouts, and it's great for Tain Liza's gym. It's also a pretty good boomer. It's also E4 viable with spikes and walls almost every physical attacker. Easily A. Agron has the normal absorbability. It's so good for eating booms in Magma hideout. It's also just an all around mid to late game beast with Rockhead, Head Smash, and Superpower. It pops off on Tain Liza's gym, and some crazy stats can make it E4 viable. It's great for Maxi and Winona, and being one of the only Pokemon that can easily eat booms and hide out. Puts it in A+. Scyther and Caesar are very good mid game Pokemon. Insane and Winona split. Hideouts, Tain Liza's gym, and Tain Liza herself. Their typing is really good. Scyther is also viable for Tain Liza and E4 fighting enough. A tier. Mywild gets Intimidate and a Steel typing, but its stats are pretty bad. It's good for Watson split and okay for trainers on Flannery split, but it's pretty bad outside of that. D tier. Steelix is very solid for mid game, great for Norman, Winona, and Hideouts, and a fantastic pivot on Tain Liza. Fills the physical wall roll very well. Onyx is also pretty decent early on. Steelix also takes booms very well. A+. Hitmonlee isn't crazy. You have good stats it can pop off on Flannery, but on average, it's okay. It's decent early on for Watson and gets Earthquake by Flannery. C tier. Hitmonchan is slower and has worse attack, but it gets guts. It's particularly really good for Watson. B tier. Hitmonsop is a really good Intimidate user. It also gets Detect, which is really good for double battles. B+. Breloom is a very solid fighting type and great for Watson. It's very good for Flannery split and mid game. It's also great for Winona as it baits HP flying from Arrow and it pivots very well. It can also be used for Maxi 2's T-Tar and is decent for, for Roxanne as a Shroomish. A very solid Pokemon, Gonin and B+. Pinsir you get by Winona and can have Intimidate, but it's below average and isn't anything special. C+. Heracross has some E4 viability if you have good stats, it's nothing crazy outside of that. Pretty good for Tain Liza's gym. C+. Aryama is one of the best Pokemon you can have for Watson with Fake Out. Guts and Thick Fat also help. It's pretty good for Flannery Split too. Makuita is nice for Roxanne as well. Thick Fat is great for Flannery's gym and it's decent for Hideout. B+. Medicham is a pretty fun Pokemon. Metite is whatever for Brawly, but Medicham with Fake Out, Endure, Detect, and good offensive stats makes it very good for mid game. It's also very good for dull battles. Solid Pokemon in B tier. Machamp is slow and doesn't resist enough to take a ton of hits. It's good against slower Pokemon though, but it's nothing crazy and you get it after Flannery. C tier. Primeape is insane. Commonly able to sweep Flannery, great for Watson's gym, great for random trainers with reversal, good dull battle mon, and can single handedly sweep Norman. It gets tons of cool moves and sweeps various random trainers. Easily A+. Ariados is pretty good for Watson's split, it can beat Wobbuffets, but it doesn't do anything significant, never really comes to any boss fight. D tier. Dustlarks is good early on and decent for Brawling and Watson. It can beat the Ampharos, but doesn't do much after that. C tier. Beautifly has some good special attack, but it's pretty mediocre for Roxanne. And it's terrible after that. F tier. Beedrill can toxic against Watson. It's pretty bad outside of that. 
Though there might be some pre-damaged swarm kills you can get here and there, Lydian is surprisingly good. It has fast Encore with the Grass Absorb ability. It's funny enough E4 viable with enough speed, but Encoring stuff into Solar Beam, what it does best. B+. Yama can use Detect in Dull Battles and can be good for Maxi's Executor, but that's about it. C+. Illumise is insane with fast Encore. It gets Encore, Wish, Moonlight, Seismic Toss, meaning it can beat just about anything that it can outspeed and switch into on a resisted hit. Decimate it's Brawly, it's good for Watson, it's one of the best Maxi 2 Pokemon, it's good for just about the entire game. S tier. Full Beat is good early on, and pretty good for Tain Liza's Gym Trainers with Detect and Swarm. It's nothing crazy though. C tier. Masquerain has base 60 attack for its stab moves, unfortunately. It has good non stab special hits, but it kinda sucks. D tier. Butterfree is pretty bad. It might be a desperate bring to Brawly, but it's bad outside of that. F tier. Venonat can only be caught on Magikarp Brood, and Venomoth can only be caught after the 8th gym. It sucks. Can't even evolve for Watson. F tier. Weezing is a solid Pokemon. It's good for Flannery Split and Hideouts. It only has one weakness. Sadly, it only gets Self Destruct and not Explosion, but its defense and special defense is really good, making it very useful. B tier. Gulpin is good for Roxanne, and Swallowed is amazing for Watson's gym. Encore can have its uses but it's terrible after that. C+. Muck is commonly used for exploding on Archie. It's also a great tank and hits hard with Gunk Shot. It's great for Hideout, and Grimer is good against Roxanne as well. B+. Zubat is something you don't want from Tunnel. Crobat is good for trapping Teleport Mons and has decent typing and hits stuff for okay damage. Usually you get it late game where it's not that useful, but it's decent mid game. C+. Ekans with Intimidate is decent for Brawly, but it's okay after that. Good do for Trip Hinge, but falls off hard, and it's not very useful. C tier. Espeon isn't great. It's okay for mid game, maybe for Tain and Liza trainers, but there are better Pokemon. C. C tier. Grumpig is fantastic early to mid game, especially Watson's gym. Good stats early and resisting Psychic is pretty nice. Thick that makes it okay for Flannery's gym as well and maybe even a blaze can answer. Low damage output and flying off takes it down a bit. C+. Bobafet is a pretty important counter. Shadow Tag is good for catching, and it could also be a last ditch effort against hard Pokemon. It's a common E4 Pokemon and fits teams pretty well, and it's something you want to keep alive for a while to have that option for the Elite Four. A+. Unknown can be okay for Roxanne and Brawly, but yeah, not much else to it. F tier. Gardevoir is a beast. Potential Syncmon to get good natures and Trace is busted. This thing is amazing for Flannery's gym, beating Blaziken, and it's good for the entire game, especially Maxi 2 where it can get multiple kills. You can even use Trace and C4 Cavern and the 8th gym to get Swiss Swim with Magical Leaf coverage. Speaking of coverage, it also gets Fire and Ice Punch. Gardevoir is so good and has so many uses with Trace, and it does so much. A+. Hypno is just an okay Psychic type. You get it late as well. It's okay for Flannery Split, but it does have plus 42 special attack in EK, making it decent. C+. Alakazam is okay in hideouts, and for random trainers, it gets nice coverage. It evolves late and is okay for Maxi 2, but it's nothing crazy. It's also a Syncmon. B tier. Alakazam is okay in hideouts, and for random trainers, C+. Chameco decimates Brawly. Recover, Wish, and Stab Psychic eliminates almost all of his mods. It's also pretty good for Roxanne and Watson splits. It does fall off pretty hard though. C+. Jinx is a pretty good offensive mod. Kills 3 on Tabitha and overall good for mid game. Its stat moves are very good for its stats. B tier. Shiftry is pretty good in Sun, and having Dark type is nice in general. Fake out, stab moves, and explosion are all helpful. It's a good boomer on Maxi 2 and decent for Flannery's gym. B tier. The earliest you can get Mightyena is Flannery Split. Having low special attack really hurts it, but it does get decent coverage and intimidate. C tier. Cacturn is pretty bad. Again, Dark typing is nice, but this thing is slow and super frail. It'll be good if it got Sucker Punch though. D tier. Umbreon is pretty interesting. It's bulky and gets Wish, making it a decent Pokemon. It's below average for Elite Four and just doesn't do much outside of Wish. C tier. Zoom can only be caught in Magma Hideout post game and in Cave of Origin where you get Duskull. You just don't get this. If you did get it, it would be insane though. Murkrow is a Pokemon you probably will never get. It's on 110 and in Mount Pyre. Theoretically, if you do get it, it wouldn't be very good. It has absolutely no bulk and doesn't hit that hard, though it does get Sky Attack. It's too late in the game to do much. D tier. 
Sneasel can be found early on in Granite Cave, it gets Fake Out and some physical moves, but it's pretty limited with its stab moves being very bad. It's a good Alakazam answer for Maxi, and it's just a below average Pokemon in general. C tier. Absol is a pretty decent Dark type. It gets powerful moves and has good attack. It's good for situational fights, decent for hideout, and the 7th gym. B tier. Mistrevis is fantastic for Tay and Liza with skill swapping the Medicham. It's also really good for the trainers in that gym. It's also really good for Magma Hideout. A tier. Banet is pretty similar. It's really good for Hideout, it's really good for Tay and Liza's gym. It does get overshadowed by Mistrevis and Gengar a bit, but it's a really, really solid ghost type. It's also a backup for Clops for the Elite Four if you somehow lose your Clops or you don't catch it. It has a monster attack stat and it gets Shadow Sneak. A tier. Dusclops is the sole reason Elite Four is possible. Insane stats in EK, pretty much needed for Steven, it fits E4 teams very well. S+, plus, the best Pokemon in Emerald Kaizo. Gengar is the most consistent Pokemon for Tay and Liza. It's great for the last trainer in that gym as well. It's also fantastic for Magma Hideout and gets good coverage. A tier. Deli Bird only gets Ice Beam. Its stats are also terrible. You do not want this thing. F tier. Hyla Swine is fine for Flannery Split because it gets EQ. It's usable in Hideout, but not great. C tier. Glalie is an insane Pokemon for mid game if you get it in Granite Cave. It has some of the best stats and gets Intimidate. Ice Shard, Weather Ball, Signal Beam, Shadow Ball, and Explosion are all insane moves. It's also a very reliable late game boomer. This thing is a mid game carry, putting it in A tier. The Reggies are all available just before the Elite Four. Reggie Rock is terrible goes in F tier. Registeel can be used for Rage Mets pivoting, but so can a lot of other Pokemon, so it probably doesn't come there. And Regis has potential for Drake and Glacia, putting it in C tier. But yeah, this is my complete Emerald Kaizo encounter tier list. This is the general stuff that I wanted in here. Um, I took a lot of time and a lot of research and asked a lot of people about some of these Pokemon. Hopefully this tier list was helpful to you. If you disagree with any of these picks, make sure to let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your opinions on some of these. Speaking of Kaizo, I'm also streaming Crystal Kaizo Plus on my Twitch account. You can see that linked below. It's just about as hard as Emerald Kaizo, which is something really cool. But yeah, I'll have an image to this tier list linked down below. Again, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and have a great day.